What is up everyone? Welcome to Campbell's Coins. You know what today is. Actually, you have no idea what today is. Today is an unboxing video for some coins I'd sent off to PCGS for grading. Well, those coins have arrived back. And I'm gonna do that unboxing video starting right now. If you haven't checked out the video that I've already made of the coins I sent out, I have that linked right here in the upper left. You can check that out. Come back to this one if you want. There were some coins that I sent off uh, that I did not include in that video only because I, I came across them after I'd done the video and decided, well, I'm just gonna send all these off too. Uh, there's eight coins in, in total. I had a voucher or had eight vouchers uh, for free gradings and I had to use it up before my membership expired in early February. So uh, I actually got it in right on the deadline and they accepted it right as my membership was expiring so I was able to use those eight. But if you do have a membership with PCGS and you do have grading vouchers, use them before you lose them because they do not roll over and as soon as your new membership starts, that's when uh, your new grading vouchers will come in and your previous ones will go away. So, uh, now that I've said all of that, let's go ahead and get to this unboxing. Let's see what we got in here. Now, spoiler alert, I do know the grades of these coins and the reason for that is because PCGS offers um, a little service. When you have an account with them, you can go log into their website and you can see the grading process when the coins arrive, when they're going through inspection, when they're going through grading, when they're going through encapsulation, and then when they finally get shipped off to you. When they're going through, after they finish the encapsulation phase, they will list the grades that you received. Back to what I was saying, I already know the grades that I received for some of these, but you guys don't, so we're gonna do a little grade reveal. See what happened here. Now, right off the bat, I have not seen a black PCGS, um, I don't know what you'd call this, a holder box? coin holder box. That's uh, usually they're blue. Maybe they change them from time to time, but I like that PCGS will ship the coins, or not just the, the holders in an individual box, they'll put them in something like this. This kind of protects them, making sure that they don't get bounced around. I think I'm gonna pause the video right here. I'm gonna put some post-it notes over the grades. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. Let's get started here. So we've noticed a few things. This came with a black case instead of a blue one. And I'm pretty sure these are holdered. Let me zoom out. Focus. I'm pretty sure these are holdered in a new uh, generation of PCGS coin holders. I'm not positive, but they look a little bit different from what I had sent in last year. So this particular one is, come on now. This is an 1894S. Surprisingly, it still has, I felt it had uh, some hints of, of luster remaining. And I thought that this coin would grade XF45 AU50, maybe. Um, but I was really hoping for an XF45. And I just kind of want, let me show off this holder really fast. So this is the holder that it came in. And then at the bottom, if it'll focus on it, they have a. Uh, some sort of number down there. I'm not I'm not exactly sure if that entails 
the order that I had placed or if this is uh, something else entirely. But, um, okay, so reveal. This is a 1894S Morgan. I thought it would get XF45, maybe AU50, and instead we got XF40. A little bit disappointed on that coin, but um, that's just how it is. All right, next one is a, another Morgan. This one happened to come from my my grandfather's collection. He had passed away uh, a little over two years ago, and um, I was just able to go through his collection. And this 1882S um, had some really dark mirrors to it, and I thought that was really interesting. And I, I knew it had been. Um, I knew it wasn't exactly perfect, but I kind of wanted to see what kind of grade it would get, just because uh, there's, uh, it's got some interesting color to it. It just is very light and dark. And maybe this is just me as an inexperienced grader or uh, inexperienced eye looking at coins, but I thought it would get uh, like a PL designation or a DMPL, uh, just because you could really see some um, some really great reflection in the mirrors. And what did this one get? Uh, I was actually thinking it would get like a, a 62 DM, or excuse me, D, uh, DL, or a 62 DMPL, um, but I wasn't positive. And instead, what did we get? AU55. What do you guys think about that? Do you think that is an AU55? This um, is an example of hundreds, I would say, of coins that you really shouldn't judge a coin based on the holder, that you should judge it based on the coin itself, because I think this coin looks actually really, really nice. And while um, it is graded AU55, I, uh, I just think it's, it's really a really nice coin. Well, my battery is dying on this, so I'm going to fix that. And we're back, moving on to our next coin here. All right, this one is 1884O. Um, the guy that I bought it from had it in a little coin flip thing, and he was saying, oh, this coin will get MS65, it's Jim BU, and I agreed with him. I was, I think I'm fairly good at grading Morgans, but I, uh, I don't see a whole heck of a lot of chatter going on in the, the cheek or the face. There is like a line right, right there. Um, let's see if I can get this to, clear up just a little. Um, it's got some peripheral toning, not, uh, not super gorgeous, but not bad either. Um, this coin is just, is really, really nice and, uh, catches that light. But as you can see that toning, um, brownish gold toning kind of goes around the circumference. So what did this Morgan grade? This one came back as a Mint State 64. And uh, going off of what I just mentioned with that 82S Morgan, I feel that this is actually a 65. Um, I was actually surprised it did not get like a 64 plus, uh, just because the luster that it has. Um, and, and it just does not have a whole, lot, a whole heck of a lot of chatter on it at all. I'm trying to get a little bit of a sharper image for you all. There was uh, an individual who commented that this coin would get a 64 and they were correct on uh, the video that I put out when I was packaging these up. 
And uh, I kind of want to ask them what they thought about why they said 64 versus 65, but I haven't gotten to that yet. But uh, anyways, yep, this one came back uh, 64. All right, moving on. Something a little different. This is a 1909S Barber Half Dollar. I uh, thought that this one was in pretty good shape considering most Barber Half Dollars come back are really, really worn. You can't see the, uh, the edge of it really well. Um, you just don't have this sort of, this sort of uh, strike left. Um, everything is, oh, my lens is going a little nuts. You just have um, really nothing left with the barbers. Unless you're buying a mint state coin, you just don't see a heck of a lot of uh, coins that are in between. I thought this coin would get XF40, XF45, and um, I mean, you can still see if it will let me. You can still see Liberty coming through on the little uh, headband there. And uh, let's see, what did we get? I've never received a coin in this grade before. 1909S got a VF20. What do you guys think of that? Do you think that deserves a higher grade or the VF20 was uh, a good call on this one? All right, let's move on to the next one. All right, this is a 1952S Wheatback Penny. It has a really, really good strike. Huge amount of luster on this coin, especially on the reverse. My camera is struggling right now trying to capture this. I should have probably, I should have put a different lens on, but all right, we're gonna power through it. If you hear any like chattering of the, the lens trying to focus, that's what's going on. Anyways, uh, this one, um, I just thought was amazing. And I got this off of an estate buy, but what did it get? This is actually the highest grade of the group that I had sent off. What did you think it got? This one got Mint State 65 Red Brown. I'm not entirely sure I agree with the Red Brown, um, especially since the reverse is, it's got some, some darkness to it, but not a whole heck of a lot. Do you agree with this grade? Let me know in the comments below. All right, let's move on to our next item. Now this one, this one I knew would get this grade-ish. Uh, this is a 1915S Wheatback Penny. And I knew this coin had been cleaned. There was a lot of scratches on the obverse. It's got some, some really nice toning to it. And I'm not exactly sure if that's the toning that it received um, throughout the years or if that's the toning from uh, being clean the way it was. But this, this coin um, in mint state condition is worth a pretty penny. And I just, I thought that this coin would get unk details and that's uncirculated. Uncirculated details cleaned. But well, what did it get? What do we have? We got PCGS genuine harshly cleaned AU detail. I did not think it would get the AU designation. Um, but yes, this was harshly cleaned. And the primary reason for me to get this 
Um, a lot of people will try to sell coins like this on eBay and they'll say cleaned, but you don't know if it's AU details or unk details. And when you get it in a holder like this, you kind of, it, it settles the price and gets that, uh, a knowing, um, element out of the equation. So, uh, yeah, I will probably be selling this one just cause I'm not a huge fan of the wheat back pennies or pennies in general, but um, at least I know what PCGS thinks of it. And I'm gonna save uh, this for last. So this is another coin that I did not include in the video, but this was, um, and yet another coin from my grandpa's collection. Um, going through some of his coins, found this one immediately and was really shocked at how nice it was. This is a 1950 D Franklin half dollar, uh, extremely great luster. And I thought it would get full bell line designation. Full bell lines are these little lines at the bottom of the bell. Depends upon the strike of the, you know, the condition of the die. If the die is deteriorated, it will not make a full impression of those lines. And so when you have a coin that is designated full bell lines, not only are you looking at one of the first coins minted with that, with those dies, but you're also looking at a coin that hasn't been circulated much. Um, because if it were circulated just a little bit, it could remove those lines. But it primarily talks about the uh, the die deterioration. Um, and it's not exactly centered. It's a little bit off in the holder. That's kind of disappointing. As you can see, really nice luster. I thought this would get uh, a 63 plus full bell lines. It was just really, really nice. And it was one of those like super frosty coins that I, I just, you don't see a whole lot of, um, at least I don't. It was just very, very clean, a um, little bit of marks on the face. And um, I think there's like one, I'm trying to find, I'm trying to find it through the camera view. Uh, I think there's a little bit of chatter in the fields, not a whole lot. This coin actually surprised me with the grade. It came back min state 64 full bell lines. So, I mean, that's good, but I was, I liked the plus designation. I was kind of hoping for that. All right, and moving on to our final coin. If you saw the last video, you would know what I'm gonna show you. So this is a, this is a 1894, I think, or 1893 um, nickel. And for coins that are not graded, this is how, if, in case you don't know, this is how coins are sent back to you. They're sent in this um, styrofoam, and uh, which is nice because it really protects the coin. But it's a little styrofoam thing, and then it comes in little... Thing. So this one says 1894, not no service refund. And um, I'm not sure why. I couldn't actually tell if this is 1894 because you can't see the date on this coin. I thought it would grade P01. P01 designating like the lowest poor grade that it can possibly receive because it has even wear um, across the obverse and reverse and I'm wondering if that divot in the back of the coin is the reason why they did not grade it or they didn't attempt to grade it but um, if someone would know besides if it was if it was that divot if it's because it can't read the the date is that a reason that PCGS will not grade a coin uh, if that's the case that would, that would be uh, really interesting but um, they put it as 18, I don't know if they were going off of what I had listed, because I put 1894 on the, on the order form, and I don't know if they're just returning it that way, but uh, anyway, that is the designation they gave this one. They just would not 
no service refund. Well, that's gonna do it for me. That's the grading reveal for all of these coins that I got from PCGS. A uh, little disappointed with the majority of them. Surprised with a few. Uh, that's how it goes. If you guys plan on sending something to PCGS, I suggest really looking at their website and the images of the coins that they already have graded to match with the coins that you want to send. They have coins up of every year, of every mint, and you can go on there and look. Okay, I've got this 1950D Franklin half dollar. What does mine look like compared to all the other ones that are listed there? And you can go, if it doesn't have luster, move to the AU section. And if it's a little bit more worn, go to the XF and then VF and on and on down the line. But I highly suggest if you are a new numismatist out there, if you're a new coin collector, if you're just getting into the hobby, really look at the images that are that they give you to see what a coin will grade before you send it in. You can match coins. Obviously, it's not gonna be 100% every single time because it's human grading. They're going to, um, what they give one coin in one grade, they could give it a completely different grade another time if you cracked it out of its case and sent it in. So it's really imperative that not only you check out what coins could grade, but also look at their services. You don't want to send in eight coins like this. You want to send in as many as possible because your shipping costs will add up over time. And it costs a lot to have these graded. The regular service is $35. I would not have graded these coins here if I didn't have the eight free vouchers that I got with my membership. I would have used, um, I, I just haven't had time this year to use them on actual some other submissions. I thought I would have more time to go through more coins and use them on those. And uh, I just didn't. And so I was coming down the wire and I thought, oh, what the heck, I'll just send these coins in, get them graded, um, and then I can show my audience what uh, some of these would look like. And it's also a good, um, I, I think I have a good amount of grades so far that I can use as my reference point for if I get a coin, I can kind of match it to that and see uh, what one will get over another. Sometimes it's uh, luck of the draw and you really don't know what you're going to get. But it really does help to to check out the images and if you think your coin is going to get like a mint state 63, maybe it's not worth sending in. Maybe it's too too common of a coin because even a lot of like high end I, I sent in a, a modern penny. It was in 1994 Philadelphia. I had just pulled it from a coin roll hunt that I had done. And lo and behold, it came back Mint State 67. Uh, what? Whoa, that's pretty cool. I haven't, that's the highest grade graded coin I've ever received. I thought this penny was flawless and it might get like a 68. Well, that's all great and fine, but what is that penny worth? That penny based on PCGS prices is $16. Will it get that? Maybe, probably not. It's probably going for eight to 10 on eBay if you can find it. It costs $16 to have it graded on top of the shipping cost um, because you pay for the shipping, you send it there. I sent mine in a flat rate box like these. So you think that's 750 and then you pay based on what you think um, your coins are worth. You pay for that return shipping and at a minimum, coming back from PCGS, it's 20 bucks. So if you're sending in like one coin here and there, you're gonna really eat it in cost, and unless that coin is worth a huge amount of money, it's not gonna be worth it. That being said, they do offer bulk submissions. So if you have coins of like one particular mint, one particular year, you can send in a whole bunch. Um, and their rules are listed on their website, but I just wanna throw it out there. You can send in a whole bunch of these and they, I think they grade them. Um, they do, they'll do five groups of one particular mint and one particular, one particular year 
for I think 12 bucks a coin, which is the lowest one, but it's only if you're doing a group, sub, like a bulk submission, I think they call it. So just do your research. Um, that really will help you save money. Uh, the two previous videos I did sending coins out, one was uh, for the modern service and one was for the regular, uh, the restoration service. Those were kind of educational videos for, for me and then also for my audience. I wanted people to see that just because you get coins in a mint state pack and you cut them out and you send them in, that does not mean you're going to get high grades on those coins. I remember I got mint state 63s. I think the highest was mint state 66. And they just, even in those grades, they're not worth that much money. Uh, maybe you can sell them off for a couple bucks, but you're still losing money compared to like what you're paying to get them graded. Uh, same thing with the restoration service. I had pie in the sky thoughts uh, for this 18, no, not 18, 1942 S walking Liberty half dollar. I thought this coin was gorgeous. It just needed to be cleaned up a little bit. And when it was cleaned up, they would see like how awesome it looks. Well, they gave it AU 58 and it's not worth that much. I mean, I think it's like 50 to 70 bucks in that grade. But when you do the restoration service, you pay 1% of what you think it's worth. And so not only is the restoration service cost more, but you're paying, you know, this percentage on top of it. So really, really do your research. It's imperative that you do, because if you don't, you will be losing a lot of money and you just don't want to do that. All right. I, I think I blathered on long enough. Thank you guys all for watching. This is Campbell's Coins and that's my two cents.